Shane from Escape Trekking Adventures. I'm here today to talk to you about trekking Mount Kilimanjaro to Everest Base Camp in Nepal. The items that you take to these locations is very similar, so let's take you through it. The first thing you're going to need when you go to any of these treks is a large duffel bag. The porters will pile these up, tie them together. That's what you're going to need to bring. Backpacks are no good, they're too heavy, they're too bulky. If you want something like this, 150 litres, you do not want any less than 120 litres. Your sleeping bags are a really bulky item. And the last thing you want to be doing is spending 20 minutes packing your bag every morning. Now, other technical items are gloves. You need a thinner pair to wear on the inside. You'll wear these at times through the day. And then you're going to need something that's Gore-Tex outer. Now, a good quality Gore-Tex outer hiking glove like this. You slide through your wrist, tighten that up. That way if you're walking along, you're going to take it off, it won't blow away. You slide your hand in, pull that tight, seal it up. Now this type of arrangement, it's not a full mitt, but it gives you a little bit of dexterity as opposed to I find the five finger gloves tend to hold your hands out like this and they're quite uncomfortable to walk in and grasp the pole. Next thing, you're going to need beanies. Now, a beanie with a little cord on it like this holds it to your head when it's blowing. If you want to get stuff that's got a windstopper material in it, the same as your balaclava. Windstoppers, good balaclavas, will have a nose piece that you can breathe through and a mouthpiece. I'll also change the material here so you can hear much better. The best item you should invest in on all these tracks is a buff. These are a really versatile item. You can just use them simply as a bandana. You can take them down, just use them like that. Neck warmers or full, full head covering. Now socks for Kilimanjaro or base camp. As you get up higher, it gets colder, you're gonna need warm, thick pairs of socks. Merino tends to be fairly well, wear fairly good. And then you want a thin thermal liner. Summit down in Kilimanjaro, you're probably gonna to wanna to look at two thin thermal liners and a thick outer. Also for summit day at Kilimanjaro is a drink bottle parker. So your water bottle will slide in there like that. Water will freeze, especially at night up there. Once you get above 5,000 meters down to Kilimanjaro, no matter what you do if your water bladder it tends to freeze. So you have to store hot water in these. Pop a little bit of an electrolyte or, or some sort of flavouring in there just to take the sting off the hot water. Another item is you can get these flat platypus bottles like this, fill them up with hot water. They'll fit inside your jacket pockets and they'll keep you warm while you're trekking at night. So I take with me three bottles using SteriPens to treat the water when it's clear and if it's clouded you always need to take water purifiers with you as well. Other items you can purchase is camp booties like these. Not a necessity but if you can find them and you can get them they're a really great item to wear around. Keep your feet toasty at night. Sleeping bag liners are a must. They'll really keep you warm. They increase the sleeping bag um, rating by a lot. Thermals now you want to buy good quality thermals, you can get these for all the good at retail out outlets. I wear a 160 weight thermal and a 200 gram weight thermal. Some of that Kilimanjaro, you will have two them both items on. And if even at Kalapatara at base camp, you will be wearing both of them in the middle of the night. Hey? Now when I talk about layers and insulation for these places, you're going to want to have breathable lightweight layers. So you'll start off with shirts and the light. This is a fleece jumper that I got from Nepal through the Sherpa shop. Now one of my favourite jumpers for the reason being it's got a really long zip on it. The chest zip comes down to here. It's got the thumb holds so that your hands go through. So you can pull your sleeves right up, zip right down and it will vent and breathe really well. Then when a cold breeze pops up, which you can do every second five minutes on Kilimanjaro or in Nepal, you roll your sleeves down, zip your chest up put your hood over. And this is actually a climbing shirt 
And when it zips up, it'll go right over your nose and around here. One of the best investments you can ever make. Next thing we can talk about is a vest. This has a wind stopper in it. Again, nothing too dear, nothing too expensive. But you'll use a vest through the, through the day. Then we look at insulated jackets like this. This is synthetic jackets. Now it's a Primaloft, Primaloft Eco. It has a wind stopper in it also. And you'll find all these pockets will vent. Everything is all about venting you know, at these altitude places. You find that you'll end up getting too hot. It has a really nice head loft on it. Adjusts in three different places so you can really suit your body type. Through nine tenths of your Kilimanjaro trek and your Nepal trek, you'll be wearing just a lightweight trekking pant. Something that's a bit flexible is always good. Lightweight, so if you do tend to wash them on your acclimatisation days, they tend to dry out fairly quickly. You just want to have something with a few extra zippers and pockets in them. Now, insulated pants, these are an outdoor research pant, they're a climbing pant. This is the type of material you want to get. They're highly water resistant, highly wind resistant, but breathe really well. If you ever go on to do any, any climbing, it's got a crampon guard here. These zip up and down to adjust to your, your large boots. Really flexible material. All the zips, everything's all in the right place. Everything is all adjustable here. You don't require belts with these. They make for a really comfortable insulated trekking pant. You'll wear them at summit night at Kilimanjaro. Hiking up to Calabatar in the dark, great item. Now when we talk Gore-Tex, again, you want lightweight, but you want breathable. Now, a zipper that runs the full length. So when you have it on, you can actually vent down this way. Open that up and it vents your legs from the top. And then when you do want to put them on or get them off, you run your zipper right up, easy to pull on and off over your boots. Don't need to take your shoes off. Last thing you want to do when it's starting to rain, anything with the zipper down here, if it's only 100, 200 mil long, not suitable. These will actually roll up into their back pocket, so they're really small item. Once you roll them right up, they'll find your item. Vortex jacket, same thing. You want to look for something where all the seams are pulled away from the shoulders, where the shoulder straps are and where they'll rub. You also want to look for items where the pockets all breathe. The thing about Gore-Tex is it's breathable, but only to a degree. Same thing down the side of this jacket. You can bend that right down. Or essentially, you can even zip this one right up. And what you end up with is basically a poncho. And in light rain, that will still keep you dry and let you breathe. The thing you find at most of these locations through the day, you actually get quite hot and you don't need the, the cold attire on. You'll carry your Gore-Tex in your bag from day one and the insulated jackets will add to your bags later, but you won't spend a lot of time in them. Mainly when you stop to rest, when you'll throw your insulated outer layers on as you cool down in the sweat, you'll start to get cold. So that's some of the items that you take to Kilimanjaro and base camp.